1990 will actually be dating those to 2000. Every 10 years, it gives us the population of Florida and the population of Pennsylvania in millions. Okay, so it's not that there was half a person in Florida in 1900, but there's half a million people in Florida. <coughs> it asks us to use the data and exponential regression to predict the Florida population for the year 2000 and the year 2014. Okay, so first of all, you've kind of done this before with linear regression when you have linear data, but population growth is very rarely linear. Usually it is exponential. So if you don't remember how to do this, you need to go to the staff and the very first option, edit. We're going to put the years in list one, but do not type in 1900, 1910, 1920, okay? Type in zero for 1900, okay? Start at zero and then 1910 would be 10 years after the beginning, okay? So you just need zero, 10, 20. And it says just use the data up until 1990. So don't go all the way to 2000, just go to 90. So you should have 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then put the Florida population. We're not doing the Pennsylvania yet, so just worry about putting in the Florida population. Okay, make sure when you get to the end that you have the same numbers in list one as you do in list two. And make sure that you have list one and list two. Sometimes the lists get deleted uh, and that would be a problem for what we're getting ready to do. So make sure that you do actually have list one and list two. If you do not, I can show you how to fix that. Oops. Okay, we got the data in there. Okay, we need to go back to our home screen, so press second mode, which is quit. And then you're going to go back to stats, but this time you're going to go over to calc. And this is the list, remember, when we did linear regression, we may have done a quadratic regression somewhere along the line. Um, but you want to scroll down until you find EXP RUG exponential regression. Press enter, but don't press enter the second time yet. Okay, do not press enter the second time yet. What we're going to do is we're going to tell it to store this regression in your Y1. So first of all, you need to press second, number one. Okay, that should show up in L1. Okay, that's telling it where to get the X values from. Get the X values from list one. Comma, Second two, that's telling it where to get the y values from. We store our y values in list two, comma. Now we're going to tell it where to put it. Okay, are we good up to this point? Because the y one's kind of hidden. All right, right beside your clear button, you will see a button labeled vars, stands for variables. Okay, press that. You should see this. Yes. You have L1, comma, L2? The comma beside the parentheses? Yes. Yours does look different. Okay, Grace and Emma and probably Gabe. Y'all's is a little different because you have the more updated calculator. Yours might be different too. Yeah, I'll help you guys here in a second. <coughs> okay, VARS. Okay, go over to Y VARS. Okay, bars over to Y bars, press enter, and you'll see a bunch of Y1s, Y2s, Y3s. Okay, just press enter so that it'll put it in Y1. So this is what yours should look like at this moment. Huh? Bars over to Y bars, enter, enter. Okay, um, I'm going to pop. Um, we can write down this equation, but notice they're really, really long decimals. Um, so if I ask you to write down the model for the function, I would round to about three places after the decimal. So on the first one, that's still going to be 0.5. 
Um, so the model here is y is equal to 0.5 times what was the base 1.037. To the x. Okay. However, we are not going to use that to uh, predict. What we're going to use to predict is we're going to use the graph. Okay, we're going to use the graph, and here's why. When you told it to store this model in y1, press y equals. Okay, what it did was there's your equation, and it typed in all those decimals for you. Um, so it's keeping it very precise because we know exponential growth changes really, really quickly. Okay, so if we round this off, there's a big difference between uh, 1.03 to the x and 1.037 to the x. There's going to start to become quite a bit of difference. So we don't really want to have to round. So we're going to use the graph to do this. But we need to adjust our window first. So go to your window. And let's think about our x values for a second. Our x values came from the years. Okay, we started with year zero, so your x minimum needs to be zero. We put in data up to 90, but think about what we need to predict for. We need to predict for 2000, that's 100. We need to predict for 2014, that's 114. So I'm going to make my x maximum like 120 just so that I've got a little bit of extra room there on the end. The next thing that XCSL, um, or excuse me, SCL is the scale. That just tells it how often to put a tick mark. You really don't have to change that. That's just a visual kind of thing. If you don't want just a thick line down there at the bottom, you might want to change it to like, uh, I don't know, change it to like 10. That way you don't have quite as many tick marks. Think about our y values. Our y values were the population. So let's look at what we've got. We've got 0.5. It doesn't make sense to have negative population, so let's just make the y minimum zero. The highest population on the table is 16, but we've got to go beyond that. So I'm going to say 25 just, just to make sure that I've got enough room up there. And I'm not really, I'm not going to change the y scale on this one. I could, but I'm not going to. Okay? So press graph. And here comes the exponential model. Okay, there's the model. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to tell you to do was to turn on your stat plot. Okay, turn on your stat plot so that you can see the actual data values. Okay, you can do that one of two ways. You can press second y equals and turn plot one on, um, or you can go to y equals and then scroll up. Um, but that'll put your data and the model. <coughs> Excuse me, on the same graph. So, based on this data, this is a pretty accurate model, right? I mean, the, the regression line right here goes through the majority of the data points. So, this is actually a pretty good model uh, for this population. It did experience po uh, exponential growth. So, here's how we can use the graph to predict. If you press second trace, which is right beside the graph button, you're used to the stuff in the calculator menu. You've used um, zero. You've used minimum, maximum, and intersect before. We're going to use the very first option. We're going to use value. So press enter. And when you, go, when you press enter, you'll see x equals in a flashing cursor. It wants you to put in an x value. So we want to predict for year 2000, which was 100, because we changed our scale. Press enter, and then it gives you the y value. So the prediction for 2000 <clears throat> is 19.3. Well, the actual data says 16 million. So that's a bit of an over prediction. I mean, 3 million people, that's quite a bit. Um, looking at it this way, it's only 3.3, but it's 3.3 million. So it's quite a bit of an over estimate there. Um, but let's go ahead and do what it says for 2014. Let's predict for 2014 as well. Now, as long as you don't press anything else, you don't have to go back to the trace menu. You can just start typing in 114, and it'll let you predict for as many values as you want as long as you haven't pressed anything 
drops. For 2014, it predicts 32.25. That's a lot of people in Florida. Now, <clears throat> um, there is, if you're ever curious, I know some people are, some people really aren't, but the United States Census Bureau has a world population clock that you have access to online. Um, so here is the predicted U.S. population, my education. The world population is pretty interesting because they show you um, the aspects of population change. There's approximately one birth every 30 seconds, there's one death every 15 seconds. Um, you get a migrant every 29 seconds. Can we talk about 13 um, second home power? <laughs> so every 13 seconds, United States theoretically gains a new person. Pretty interesting. Um, and then so does the top populated countries in, in the world. What, what is the difference between India and the United States? Yeah, there, there's a big discussion. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So this shows you um, the density of the United States population. So you got men over here, you got men over here, and then eight. Yeah, that was a question on that. Oh, yeah? We never talked about gold. Go ahead. Not in my class. We talked about Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, there's lots of cool stuff on here, but anyway, what I want to look at here is Florida to see what the population was in 2014. The population estimate for Florida, according to the United States Census Bureau, was 19.9. Okay, so what our model predicted for 2000 was more accurate for 14 years later. What I'm trying to point out here is that exponential uh, population growth for a while is exponential. It, it'll grow pretty quickly for a while, but thinking about AP Earth, what are, what are things that cause a population to stop growing exponentially? It has to be. Yes. I'll, I'll tell Mr. McKiff that, that you guys... We actually learned something. <laughs> Uh, that, that you would learn something you remembered it and you were able to use it in that class. So, <coughs> excuse me, exponential growth is not unrestricted, excuse me, exponential growth is unrestricted, but population growth often is not. It'll start exponentially, but it eventually slows and approaches the maximum sustainable population or the carrying capacity. So, logistic models are actually better models for population growth than exponential models. It takes into consideration that carrying capacity. So we can do the exact same thing here. There's a logistic model on your calculator. So I need you to go back to your home screen, go to stat, over to calc, and is it right below? Nope. It's two below the exponential regression. You'll see something that says logistic. So we want to do logistic. We're going to do the same thing we just did, L1, L2, but we're going to tell it to store it in Y2 because I want you to see both of them on the same graph. Okay, I want you to see both of them on the same graph. So logistic, L1, L2, Y2. Press enter. It takes a little bit longer because it considers more in its calculations. It takes a little bit longer to spit this one out. <coughs> bars over to Y bars. And instead of enter, enter, it's enter, down. Yeah, it does. It, it takes longer because it, it includes a lot more in its calculations. If you look there at, this is the general form for the model. So this guy calculates three different variables. He's trying to calculate A, B, and C instead of just A and B. Now what, what measure of difference in height is it? Do I need to write that down? We're, we're getting ready to see this, okay? I'm not going to write this down, okay? I'm not going to write this down. Um, I would write this equation down, though, because that's the general form of 
that. Yeah. 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 Ye